but we almost didn't get to go out of the gate because the Writers Guild decided to strike. So when the, when the Writers Guild struck that year, which is circa 1988, uh, the problem was that there was no cohesion. See, writers can write at home and nobody knows. So the, the, the head of the guild thought that in order to have cohesion, you can't have an interim agreement. Because if there's an interim agreement, then some writers will be working, which then will make other writers get jealous, and then other writers will write under the table at home. And this is what they had been experiencing in other manifestations of their negotiations. So he knew the way that he was going to pull everybody together was to offer an interim agreement, which he was required to do under his charter with the NLRB. And I know about this because I... I, I really boned up on NLRB things because of my foray with the, with the DGA on crimes of passion. So I say to uh, my attorney, uh, Peter Grossman from Linda Lichter's office, uh, who, who's, who's going to go to the WGA negotiations with me, I said, I'm going to close in the room, whatever it takes. I, I'm going to agree to anything they ask for. I said, because I happen to know Tommy Lee Wallace. He's my bud lived around the corner, we've done a movie together, we're tight. Um, he knows I'm never going to do anything to screw him. I know he's never going to do anything to screw me. We're, we're good with each other. And then Peter explains that, th that I'm going to face a point with, because he's seen the interim agreement. I don't particularly care what it is. I'm going to sign it because if I don't sign it, I can't work with Tommy on the movie. Our movie doesn't move forward. So uh, he explains it all, and, and I need one more polish and I need one more polish there's because uh, we all know the reasons why which aren't worth going into so I'm in I'm in the room there and the way they have it set up is they give you tickets to go to the negotiation there's a round of producers at 10 a.m. and then there's another round of producers at 2 p.m. and then tomorrow and same the net so everybody and, and they, they, they the guys at the WGA are so smart they figured out all the way to meet all of the requirements and they have a a band of attorneys on the whole thing. So now we're in the room, and they tell us for the first time what all the terms of the deal is. And just like me, many of the producers are hearing this for the very first time. And it gets to the point where he says, and the last thing on the boilerplate is, the writer shall retain control of the final edit of the movie. Uh, an unheard demand that's unreasonable. No one would ever agree to it. And they launched their business plan resting on the laurels of that fact. So it goes around the table, and in the room, there's Raffaella De Laurentiis. And, and, and it's her turn to stand and speak, and she's apoplectic. And it's unfair, unreasonable, we're going to make you a counteroffer, which is exactly what they want. Then they can engage in negotiations. And we got to get this out. And, and, and he says, you know, whatever you offer, I'll bring it back to our membership and see if they ratify it. And, and I'm, I'm saying to Peter, you know, how, how long does this ratification thing take? And he's, he's like, well, it could be a couple weeks before we hear boo. So I, I want a deal today. I want to get my movie on the road today. So then he's going around the table, and I see Gail Ann Hurd step up. And, and she makes her voice loud and clear. And she's right. And they're going to take everything she said back, and she'll hear back. And now they get around to me, and it's my turn. I stand up, and I say... I think this is the most fair and reasonable deal I've ever heard in the history of motion pictures. I love it. Nothing to take back to anybody. I want to sign it right now. At which point he says to me, I'll take it back for ratification. You'll hear in two weeks. And now everybody gets what I already got. And now everybody in the room agrees to the deal. <laughs> and now he's under the rock. And to make a very long story short, uh, I didn't have any more problems with the Writers Guild, and we made our movie, and Tommy was very happy.